All right, so what's going on, guys? So in today's video, we're back in the garage. We're going to get started officially on the paint prep for the Galant. I've already started sanding it. I didn't really film it because cause everybody knows what sanding looks like. Uh, but I do have some body work that needs to be done. Uh, primarily, the biggest issue is there's this dent right here on the hood. So I actually got the car like this. Said he had backed his truck into it, and that was just the damage left from the hitch. So of course, you may remember it had the hood damaged, the bumper was split, and then on the side there was a little scrape mark. But all in all, the car was in really good shape, especially considering again I paid five hundred dollars for this car. Had no strut tile rust. It's actually in very good condition, other than the hood, the bumper, and a little scrape that was on the side. Um, now initially, I was trying to find just another hood at the junkyard, like but unfortunately, I hadn't been able to find one that was in good enough condition that would be really worth. Uh, buying it and then fixing it when this one is in pretty good shape again minus that big dent in the front um, Now when I paint this thing, I'm not looking to make it perfect. Uh, I, am, I will be painting it in the garage I'm gonna put some tarps up some fans um, and just kind of use my system here I'm not looking for a professional quality job Of course, I'm building this car for the street to be driven um, on a regular basis Maybe not daily, but fairly often so it doesn't have to be perfect Like so when it comes to doing body work on a hood You have a couple options at least what I'm familiar with again I'm no expert, but the first thing is you want to pop the hood to see if you can get to that dent Like so of course the dent is right here, but unfortunately it doesn't look like uh, I'm gonna be able to get to it from the back side Hey, look at that. that that just looks so good anyway so so now if you go to a body shop a lot of them will have like a stud welder which is um which is kind of like a rivet machine uh, where you press down it would actually weld small stud onto the area that you're trying to pull and then, you, uh, and then you can attach a slide hammer to it and pull the dent out that way those actually do work really well and will be perfect for something like this um but of course those are really expensive so it kind of leads me to my next option and for that of course let me the harbor freight so what I have is this kit here. What's in here is basically a hot glue gun. I haven't even opened this yet. It's a hot glue gun, uh, some glue sticks, and this little bridge, which is gonna use, uh, which we're gonna try to use to pull that dent. So the bridge will actually mount to either side and then it has a puller in the middle. And as you tighten it, it should uh, hopefully anyway pull that dent out uh, but in any case this is a pretty big dent and there's a pretty hard crease here so if i can make any progress with this dent i think i'll be happy with it and i'll put some body filler on it otherwise as i said the hood is actually in pretty good condition but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get this harbor freight kit unpacked and we're gonna see firsthand what it does or doesn't do on my hood dent here like so of course the first step is to plug in the uh hot glue gun this is going to take a few minutes i'm not familiar with this particular one but this will take a few minutes uh, to warm up. So I'm going to go ahead, set it out the way, get it plugged up so it can start to heat up. I got my gun up here warming up. Open this kit. Like So here's the bridge itself. Like I said, you just put this over top of the dent and you will turn this knob to pull the dent up, hopefully with the uh, adhesive on the bottom of it. They give you a scraper. And this is to help you knock the dent down. Here's a different uh, puller attachment. And this is a releasing agent. All right, so this should be pretty simple. Like, so what I'm gonna do since my dent has a pretty sharp line in it is use this smaller attachment. The hot glue gun will need about 10 to 15 minutes to warm up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then we're gonna use a rag, this release agent and a rag to clean the area. So of course you see, it's really a simple process. I got the dent puller from Harbor Freight. I also got that metal mixing board. Um, and some plastic spreaders. I already had enough sandpaper as well as uh, this here. This is body filler. So in case you're wondering, uh, Bondo is actually a brand name, not a name of a product. They kind of generically toss Bondo on everything. So some people call it mud. It really just depends on what their background is. But this is what I'll be using. It actually has the hardener in the top. I've also got some acetone and a few other things that you'll need um, that I'll, I'll show you guys as we're doing this. But for the time being, I really just want to see if this little dent puller is going to work. So just in case you're wondering when it's ready, I think that's a pretty good indicator. It's actually running out of the front of it. I uh, don't think it's supposed to do that, but you know, it is a cheap part. So like, but now I'm just going to take and apply some of this hot glue to this tab and then take it over to the car and stick it in the middle of the, uh, the dent. I'll be extra liberal with it. Get this over to the car. Stick it right in the middle of the dent. Do not press on the dent. Obviously, you don't want to make the dent any bigger 
Yeah, but just kind of hold it there for about 30 seconds. All right, so now it's been about 30 seconds. We're gonna get our bridge and we're going to center it up. Now I wouldn't want to run the bridge this way because then it will fall down into the dent. I want to do it so that it's as close to the flat parts as possible. Uh, you can also adjust these to try to move these as far out as possible. And I'm just going to twist uh, my little knob on. Like so from here, as you may have guessed, we just need to turn this knob and theoretically this should pull the dent back up at least close to where it was. Now you may be able to tell, I'm not all that optimistic about this, but hell, the kit was like 12 bucks. So if it doesn't work, uh, no big loss. But it seems to have a pretty good grip on the dip, on the hood. It looks like it's made a bit of a, a difference there. Of course, you just want to crank it up until it's back to normal. So I would say that's that's actually pretty good. Of course, you can see it's still a small dent right here on the lip. Uh, so maybe I have to move this down, but it looks like the big part of it might be out. So I'm gonna see what happens if I just do that and just keep tightening it. Now, is that better? That might be a little bit better. What do you guys think? Is that about the same, a little bit better? I don't know, it definitely looks like it's high uh, right in here now. All right, so maybe I'll just try uh, the same thing, but come a little bit further down, uh, closer to this lip here. And I'll be back to show you guys the results of that. All right, guys, check it out. I'm actually impressed uh, with how well it did. Um, so of course, this was a pretty sizable dent on the front of this hood. And now I just kind of have this big low spot that's right here in the middle um, that I'll have to work out. So now I didn't mention it, but I did do some work with my body hammer and my dolly over here on the lip of the uh, hood. Because of course, it was a pretty big dent here. Folded this down. A hammer and a dolly is pretty simple. Uh, a couple tips with that. When you're using a body hammer, um, main thing is you don't need to swing too hard and you don't want to choke up on it. You really want to use just the entire handle and focus more on getting precise strikes. And what I did was just uh, you know lift the hood up I was kind of tapping on the bottom side of this uh, and then I had my dolly on the flat side kind of on the top of it and this keeps the metal from rebounding like what I mean by that of course when you hit it from the bottom it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna just flex up and then come right back down uh, but if this is here this forces it to kind of spread out again I'm no expert in body work just a few things that I've learned again don't take my word for it just try it yourself I know these kits now I've, like I said I've had this kit for a while uh, but you can get like a basic uh, hammer and dolly set uh, for pretty cheap so I should link one down in the description so what it started as and how it looks and keep in mind this is this is the weather seal right here um, I'm actually pretty happy with how that's come so far because it, it really looks like I have a high spot right in here and then this part is low so of course the low spot we can always just fill in if you wanted to go that route but the high spot we're gonna have to knock down because that's gonna give us issues like, so of course, when you're doing body work, you really don't want to uh, use a ton of body filler. You want to use as little as possible. So I'm going to keep working with this. But again, so I will work uh, to definitely get rid of that high spot and then see what I can do with the low spot. But I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. It already looks a ton better um, than it did beforehand. And this one other thing I was thinking before I paint this thing, and I want you guys' feedback on this as well, is should I cut a bigger hole for the intercooler? Of course, this is kind of in stealth mode. You don't really notice it. Like I've even considered painting at least one side of the intercooler black, but I still haven't decided yet. So you guys let me know what you think. Like, so my next step, I'm going to just sand uh, just this area here. And the reason being, because when I sand it, it'll show me clearly uh, where my high spots are and where my low spots are. Now I've already got a pretty good idea just because the way the lights are in here, I can kind of see the shadows. But when you sand it, of course, any high spot, the paint will come off first and any low spot will leave paint in that, you know, in that low spot. So it'll be really obvious once you get this sanded, uh, exactly what work needs to be done. Like, all right guys, so we're back so you can kind of see what I was talking about. I didn't do a lot of sanding, uh, but up here, where it sanded through, these are high spots because this is the area that the sander hit the most. And as you could tell um, from how it looked earlier, this entire middle is low. Like, this is a pretty big area that's low, uh, one that I'm not really comfortable with just filling. I'm actually going to keep working on this. I'm going to continue to use uh, the Harbor Freight tool. That's going to be the only tools I'm going to use uh, to fix this 
dent one hammer my that one dolly and then the little harbor freight puller and we're gonna see how it turns out all right guys so um, i went ahead and sanded it like, but i did make some progress um, it's down to a reasonable level i feel like plus i like to sand about an inch and a half or two um outside and try to feather edge uh some of this stuff this way uh, you can hide it more easily and then, as you can see i started sanding the rest of the hood too just mainly this side um, prep work is kind of important the smoother of a surface that you start off with the smoother uh, everything else will go down so this is kind of where you want to spend most of your time if you're even hoping to get a decent result ready to start the body work and this is what i got here like i showed you earlier just some bondo and this mixing board now tell me what you think the problem with this is you may have already said it is that they put the sticker on the mixing board area and it does it's not one of those stickers that kind of like pulls off uh really easily this is legitimately stuck on here so you know that's a bad look on their part they could have easily put it on the back and you wouldn't have to worry about it but unfortunately it's on the front so then i'm either gonna have to soak this in something to try to get this off or uh just use the back side of it and make do like that which is probably what i'll do because i do not feel like messing with that sticker right now and I'm trying to get this done. Also, I got my heater on. Um, it's not a cold day today. It was only it was about 50 degrees, and so this heater has got it up to about 60 or so in the garage. It does a decent job. It's a very small heater meant for like a one room thing, um, but it can normally raise the the temperature, you know, five or six degrees. Uh, of course, my garage is partially insulated, um, but of course, not the part that matters. It's the roof. None of that's insulated yet. This is your hardener. This little cream hardener and again the rest of this is your body filler so now when you open this up you will need uh you will need something to stir it up with just like anything it's going to separate depending on how long it was on the shelf so you want to get you you know an old a stick or old screwdriver or something like that uh to mix this up so i don't have any extra mixing sticks i actually just finished a project in the house uh which i use my mixing sticks so i'm going to use just this piece of scrap metal i had sitting around here it is clean. Like so you want to use about an inch of hardener per golf ball size of filler. Um, now with this, if it's colder, you can use more hardener. Um, and obviously if it's warmer or you have a bigger area, you might want to use less hardener. Uh, so obviously the more hardener is in it, it will dry more quickly. The filler is gray and of course the hardener is red. So you're looking for like a really light pink. And I said it is a little cold out here. I dropped the top and now that's gone forever. So there's a lot of different methods for doing this. Again, in mind, this course is not perfect. You just want to make sure you get a good, consistent color. That's what I mean by that light pink. So it looks like I should be uh, pretty good as far as that. So what you also notice is that your spreader is going to collect some product that was not mixed. Now, now, most mixing boards that I've seen are plastic, and that allows you to like flex them, and it helps with, with easier cleanup. Um, but this is what Harbor Freight had. And when I also didn't look too hard, it's kind of what caught my attention. So that's what we have. I'm going to go ahead and get this applied. So I'm going to take you guys over to the car. I'm going to load my spreader up. And I want to put the majority of it in my low spot. Chop the rest of it. And now I'm just going to try to press on the edges and keep it smooth. I'll try to push the edges down. That way it's less I have to sand. And I can tell I am definitely out of practice with doing this. Um, but you get the idea. So you don't want to you want to put very little on here um, and try to put it in the general shape. That way it saves you some time on sanding it. And the funny thing is I have gloves right here and I've done this barehanded. I don't know how I always manage to do that. But without fail it happens. Alright guys, so some amount of time has passed. Right, but you know your uh, filler is ready to be sanded if you can scratch it and it leaves like a white chalky mark. I think, think this is pretty good. Um, I say I got the curve of the hood and even the front lip. I think I got that in there uh, just with the spreader. It's definitely not the best looking stuff that I've ever done, but uh, this should do just fine. I think the lowest grit I have is a 180, so that's what I'm going to start with. It may take a little bit longer to shape it, but of course it is more forgiving. <laughs> Like, so you do want to be aware of this body line that's here in the hood because you really don't want to sand over that uh, because that's, it'll go through the paint really easily. All right, guys, so I've got to sand it down pretty smooth. I did use my DA to help kind of shape it real quick, um, but I'm going to finish this off with my hand. So 
overall the shape looks pretty good i still have uh, this body line that's in here and i'm pretty happy with that so what i'm going to show you guys is how to use a guide coat or what i'm going to use for a guide coat so now a guide coat is an actual product but all you're going to need is just some dark spray paint um, and we're just going to mist this over the area so now the reason you want to use a guide coat or like a spray paint in this case is just to help you find the high and low spots so and like i said what you'll notice as I sand it, if you notice, it's still dark. This area here is actually low. Like, so that's the purpose of this, just to kind of make it really obvious. Of course, you can fill it with your hands, but sometimes that can be difficult. Like, so I'm going to work on this to get this area knocked down and then hit it with another guide coat and try it again. All right, guys, so this is what you're looking for. Uh, so pretty much across the entire repair area, uh, the sanding is even. Of course, now I could have sanded it all just to get rid of the black part, but uh, again, that's not necessary once you get it to the point where it's level. Of course, these are low spots, you can tell because it's really black, but this is actually what happens when the uh, filler was not mixed properly. So I actually have an area there where it just had wet filler. <clears throat> All right, guys, so I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap this video up here so it doesn't get too long. Of course, body work and paint prep is a long process, uh, one that you really don't want to rush through if you want to have good results. And plus, there's still a few things that I want to do before I get ready to paint the car. But with that aside, I want to thank you guys for watching my video. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. Continue to share uh, my channel. I really appreciate the growth and all you guys are doing for me, and I will catch you guys later.